go over to uh, Brother Fred. The title tonight is Anointed for the Season. You know, there are different seasons uh, in our lives, and, and we need to know what to do in different seasons. And I want to start by looking at Ecclesiastes 3, and I'm going to ask Sherry to read the first eight verses of Ecclesiastes so we'll understand there are different season, seasons uh, that we all face. This is from the New American Standard uh, Translation. Uh, a time for everything. There is an appointed time for everything, and there is a time for every matter under heaven. A time to give birth and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to uproot what is planted. A time to kill and a time to heal. A time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to weep and a time to laugh. A time to mourn and a time to dance. A time to throw stones and a time to gather stones. A time to embrace and a time to shun embracing. A time to search and a time to give up as lost. A time to keep and a time to throw away. A time to tear apart and a time to sew together. A time to be silent and a time to speak. A time to love and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. See what this says, there are different seasons, and we all face different seasons, and, and you might be in a different season than me. Uh, we all face different seasons at different times, and it should have some impact on us. Now, if there are no seasons, if there are no season, then you just find out what works and continue with one routine over and over again. You work harder and harder uh, at routines, mm -hmm. doing the same thing over and over again if there are no seasons. But once you realize there are seasons, then that has to change our behavior. Mm -hmm. we, have to, we have to adjust to the different seasons. What kind of seasons uh, might might we face and what kind of strategies uh, should we use? How, how can we discern what season we're in? We're all governed by seasons. It says there are times appointed. Daniel 2 mm -hmm. verse 21 says it's God who determines the times and seasons. Ooh, amen. Amen. So God determines these. And if we uh, never faced any seasons, then our life would be very simple. We would just get into a routine and do the same thing over and over again. But once you realize there are, in fact, seasons, then we need to know how to operate and behave in the different seasons. So tonight I'm talking about anointed for the season. What do I mean? By anointed for the season, for this particular season, mm. the season that you're in, you need the anointing. See, Jesus stood up in Luke chapter 4, verse 18, and he said, the, for the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he has anointed me. Do you, do you catch that? It's the Spirit that anoints us, and what was he anointed for, uh, but to preach the gospel, to, to preach the good news, to bind up the brokenhearted, to set the captives free, and to proclaim, listen to me, proclaim the favorable year of the Lord. See, Jesus was proclaiming what season we're in. We're in the season of favor, of the favor of the Lord. Oh, and so yeah. he's, he's taking possession of the season, what season it is. And he's proclaiming what season it is. He's not looking at uh, horoscopes. He's not looking at uh, seeing what astrologers are saying. Uh, he, he's, he's taking control of the situation. He is proclaiming what season he's operating in. He is declaring that this is the season of the favorable year of the Lord. So he's declared it. And it says that we're to do what Jesus did mm -hmm. and greater works. So if we believe 
we can declare what season we're in. Now, let me just lay out a couple of alternatives. You might think, well, the Ecclesiastes, that, that was a long time ago. It might not re relate to this. So I want to give you two verses from the New Testament. Uh, first one is Matthew 11, verse 12, says that the violent take the kingdom by force. Amen. So how do you get the kingdom? How do you get the things that God promises you? The kingdom is the dominion of the Lord bringing it forth in your life bringing the kingdom, the dominion of the Lord in your life. How does he do, how does he say to do it there in Matthew 11, 12? He says, uh, the violent, those are people full of life. Yeah, full of energy. Full of energy. How do they, uh, how do they do it? They do it by force. And so what is the force that we have? It's faith. So it's by faith. And so mm -hmm. you see the promises of God in, in the Bible, and, and then you move with force and with uh, uh, to take the promises of God, bring them into your life. That's what this verse is talking about, Matthew eleven twelve. But then let's compare it to Matthew eighteen three. He said, "You have to receive the kingdom as a little child." Oh, there's those are two big differences. Big differences. Sometimes you take the kingdom by force, bringing your faith. Another time, you're a child, and you know your identity in Jesus Christ, and all you do is receive the promises. Big, big difference. How do you know which of those seasons you're in? Well, 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15 says that the natural man cannot receive the things of the Spirit of God. Woo. Amen. Because they are foolishness yes, to him. That's right. Okay, so we don't want to be like natural men and women. We want to be spiritual because the spiritual, they are the ones who discern, spiritually discern. And so which season? We're in two, we have two different seasons. One, go out and take the kingdom, take the promises by force, by your faith. The other season, receive the promises as a little child. Which season are you in? Well, it may change from day to day. It may change about the promise that you have. And so we saw from Ecclesiastes that these are appointed times. And from Daniel, that these are times established by God himself. He's the one that sets up times and he sets up seasons mm -hmm. so we need to know but here in first corinthians chapter 2 verses 14 and 15 it says the natural man doesn't receive things from god it's a spiritual person that does the spiritual person so which of those two people are you are you a natural person or are you a spiritual person and how do you know where you are that those verses talk about spiritual discernment. Now, let me say something about spiritual discernment. There is, from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, there is a gift of discerning of spirits, mm -hmm. and that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's a gift of the Holy Spirit, but in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verses 14 and 15, he's talking about something different. It sounds similar, but it's called spiritual discernment. And what spiritual discernment is, it comes from maturity. And so a spiritual person grows spiritually and has spiritual discernment. So uh, he in Hebrews, it talks about exercising your senses yes. or practicing. And so you've got to practice your senses to hear from the spirit and to know what season we're in. You, If you are operating in the wrong season when and you say well i'm going to put out my faith and i'm just going to get up every morning and i'm going to fight 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 for the promises of god and that's fine if that's the season but what if it's the season where you're to be a little child and receive a peace. And, and receive uh, the promises of god you've got to know you, and, and if you 
are operating in the wrong season. Uh, and, and you're fighting, 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 and, and what God wants to do is just give it to you as his child, then you're in the wrong season and you're not going to get the promises that he has for you. You have to know. So how can we know? Well, we have to grow up mature uh, and mature. We, we talked about spiritual growth earlier, but today we're talking about this spiritual discernment that comes from growing up spiritually and exercising your senses so that you know, okay, this is a promise of God that I need and I'm supposed to go for it with faith, okay? that You know that by spiritual discernment. It's not by the gift, it's by maturity. You begin to exercise your senses over and your over spiritual again. Spiritual senses. Yeah. Spiritual senses. And then you have to know, okay, I'm going to receive this promise, but I have to just sit here like a little child of God and, and let him give it to me and receive it that way rather than me fighting for it. And the only way you know is to see yourself as a spiritual person, begin to mature spiritually or grow up spiritually and, and begin to exercise your senses so you know which season you're in. Are you in the season of throwing stones or gathering stones? Mm -hmm. Planting seed or plucking up the plants? Yeah, yeah. You, you've got to know what season. And the only way we do it is by the spirit of God. It all starts with the, a relationship with the Holy Spirit, to be led by the Spirit of God. And, and, and from that relationship, you know in your spirit what season it is. And see, it talks about the title of the message is anointed for the season. Yes. So whatever season we're in, we have the anointing, we have the unction of the Holy Spirit to tell us this is the season to fight for our promises or this is the season to wait and receive the promises. We don't want to be using the wrong strategy. We need to use the right strategy. And I want you to know that it's not all about routine, just following a routine. Every Sunday morning, I'm going to go here and I'm going to do this. And I've got my routine. I'm going to do this, but it might not be the right season. And if the season changes and you don't change your behavior, you don't get the promises. You don't have the victory. You don't have the breakthrough. To get the breakthrough, mm -hmm. listen to me, to get the breakthrough, you need to know what season you're in and have a strategy that goes with the season that you're in. And it's not like God's trying to withhold things from you. No, God is a good God. Yes, yeah, God is in a good mood. And he has many things that he wants to give you, but you have to know how to receive them. Are you going to fight, fight, fight for those promises? Or are you going to receive them as a little child? Some promises you will fight, fight, fight for by faith. Other promises you receive as little children. Now, particularly when you're first born again, uh, that, that may be a time that you can just receive things from God. You, mm -hmm. you ask God and you receive things. It's, they come very, very easily mm -hmm. uh, to you, particularly when you're born again and, and you're just learning about the things of God, just learning to walk like a little toddler, just uh, beginning to take little steps and ask the Lord and just lift up your hands and ask the Lord for things. Mm -hmm. he, he's so merciful and he gives you so much in that time. But when you grow up and he wants all of us to grow up, then he wants you to not just ask about things, but he wants to use you. He wants to operate through you to bring things into existence in this realm that we live in. Mm -hmm. So it's not about him wanting to withhold things from you. No, he wants you to, uh, to receive the things he has for you, but sometimes he wants to work through you to bring the promises of God on the earth into your environment, uh, to bring it into your family. So it's not about just asking, oh, God, 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 give me, give me, give me, give me, give me. He wants you to grow up and get out of that and begin to look at things from his perspective 
and what he wants to do in your life. He has great things in store for you, and he's not withholding any good thing from you, Amen. but he wants you to grow up so that you begin to exercise your spiritual senses. You begin to operate as a spiritual person, and you begin to ask him, which season am I in? And I need this promise, or I know you want to give me this promise. How do I receive it? See, we don't know. The natural man, the natural mind cannot know how to operate. It takes spiritual discernment, and that comes from growing up spiritually and being led by the Spirit of God. Amen. And so yeah. this is not complex. It's just simply saying we need to be sensitive to the Holy Spirit and led by the Spirit. And don't get into routines and just do the same thing over and over again. It worked uh, last week. It worked for Grandma. It worked, it worked for uh, Aunt Susie. It worked for these other people. So I'm going to do the same thing. Or you might say, well, it worked for this minister that was on TV. So I'm mm -hmm. going to do what he said. Well, let me tell you, it's not going to work for you. It might have worked for your grandmother. It might have worked for your father. It might have worked for your aunt. But it's not going to work for you because God wants you to grow up yourself and know how to operate in the kingdom of God. Are you going to receive from him? Are you going to operate through him? That let him operate through you to bring forth his will on the earth. It's not complex. It's not complicated. God wants to do great things in your life and through you, but we have to yield to him. It's all about yielding to his will and, and operating the way he wants us to operate. Now, I want to tell you a story. There's a story about a, a young virgin. Uh, her name was Mary, and one day an angel appeared to him and her. And, and to, I'm sorry, to her and, and said, uh, you, you are highly favored among women, highly favored. And, and uh, the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you and you're going to have a son and call his name Jesus. And she said, well, I don't know how it's going to happen, but, but be it be unto me, me. as you say, according to your word, be it unto me. So she believed. It just she's this is the time she's going to receive it. She's going to receive it. Just be it unto me. I, I'm just uh, it, she's just a, operating like a little child. Just be it unto me. Whatever you say. She didn't have to put out in, in faith and fight, fight, fight. No, she just this is a time she just received. Okay, so she did uh, become pregnant with the Son of God. She was carrying the Son of God. She brought forth the Son of God and called his name Jesus, like she was told. She received all of that just as a little child herself. Uh, she didn't have to fight for it with faith. She, would, she received it according to what the angel had said to her, that the Holy Spirit came upon her. Now later, now later, when Jesus was grown and, and uh, he had his own ministry, and uh, he's in uh, John chapter 2. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a wedding feast. Okay, so Jesus is invited and his mother, Mary, uh, they're invited. And, the, and his disciples, they're invited to the feast. But well, the feast goes on for a little while. And then Mary comes up to Jesus. Uh, this is an important story. She comes up to Jesus and says, they have no wine. I'm, I'm in John chapter 2, verse uh, 2, I believe. He said, they have no wine. And Jesus said, verse 3, he said, woman, what do I have to do with you? My hour yes. is not come. The season's not here for yeah, miracles. Yeah. Oh, listen to me. The season's not here for miracles, he says. And I need you to know how Jesus operates. Jesus only does what he sees the Father do. Mm -hmm. Okay, so he's looking at the Father. So Jesus is looking at the heaven, at heaven, and and he's looking at the schedule in heaven, and it's not the season for miracles. No, oh, wow. 
But here's Mary, and who's she? She's highly favored mm -hmm. among women. Mm -hmm. And so Jesus is looking at heaven and saying, no, it's not time for, for uh, <clears throat> miracles yet. But you know what heaven's looking at? Heaven's looking down at Mary because she's highly favored. And Mary said, whatever he says, do it. So heaven, see, is looking at this woman who is highly favored, and now she's operating in faith. First, she just received as a, as a child uh, the, that the Holy Spirit would come upon her. She would uh, carry the Son of God and produce the Son of God, birth the Son of God, which she did, but now she's stepping up. Whoa, she's stepping up. It's a new yeah, season. Yeah. It's a new season, and, and she's not <laughs> willing to accept the status quo, and she's not willing to accept that it's not the season for miracles because she's going to change the seasons. She's going to change the seasons. See, Jesus is looking up to heaven and he's looking to the Father. What's the Father? Uh, what's the Father do? Because Jesus only speaks what he hears the Father say. He only does what he sees the, the Father, Father do. do. And, and, and he's looking up there and he's not seeing the time frame for miracles yet. But here's Mary, and she's stepping up with faith, and she said, now's the time. Now's the time. Whatever he says, do it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. She shifted, she shifted the seasons in heaven. She, it was not, Jesus said it was not time for miracles, but she said it's time for miracles, and she was highly favored, and heaven is looking at those people who are highly favored, and, and let me tell you, faith. let me tell you that you are highly favored, I mean. and, and if you operate in faith, you can change the seasons. Now, hallelujah. See, there was a group of people. I, I want to come back to this story in a minute, but I, I, I want to go in a little different direction, and, and in uh, uh, First Chronicles, 12 verse 32 uh it, it says that the the leaders of the tribe of Issachar Issachar uh they understood the times and the seasons amen now amen. that particular tribe uh, and Issachar means reward when uh, Issachar was a little boy uh he was one of uh, Jacob's uh, sons or Israel's sons uh, when he was a little boy, his mother said, oh, God has rewarded me. I'm going to call him Issachar. So Issachar is derived from the word reward. Okay, so Issachar, these are the leaders of this tribe now. And, and uh, several years and, and even centuries has gone by. And, and, and now you've got some leaders in that tribe of Issachar. And, and they understand the times and the seasons. And we call that an anointing. They were anointed by the Holy Spirit to understand the times and the seasons. So that particular tribe was the richest tribe in all of Israel mm. because they understood the seasons. They, under, they were anointed to understand the seasons. And so that particular tribe the land that they possessed was called the breadbasket of Israel. So they produced a lot of uh, wheat and a lot of grain and a lot of uh, uh, abundant uh, food and, and, and different things. And, and so they traded and they traded here and they traded far and they traded near. And so they were the richest tribe. And how did they get to be so rich? They understood the seasons. They were anointed they were anointed to understand the seasons. Okay, so they recognizing the seasons, there's a reward in that. that. That's what Issachar means. There's a reward. When you understand the seasons and which season it is that do we sit here as a little child and we understand our identity in Christ, who we are, and we can receive the promises of God? Or the, is that the season we're in? Or, or is it the season that that we fight by faith, fight, fight, fight by faith to receive the promises of God. And sometimes may, there may be other kinds of seasons we need to be aware of. And, and so we need to know what season we are in. And when we know the season, 
we will be rewarded because we'll know how to operate. We'll know mm. what strategy to apply. Is right. this the season to sell? Is this the season, season to, to buy? buy? Is this the season to plant? Is this the season to let our land grow fallow? Uh, what is the season? When we understand the season, we're going to be rewarded uh, with that understanding. We begin to know how we're to operate. And mm -hmm. that that is wonderful. If we can just know what season we're in, there's a lot of different seasons. We saw it, seasons. We saw it from Ecclesiastes. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of different seasons we have to know. But it, there is a greater thing than the anointing on the leaders of Issachar, and that's the anointing on believers today who can change the seasons. If Mary could do it, you can do it. You Hallelujah. can change the seasons. So you can stand up and proclaim what season you're in. That's what Jesus said. He stood up. He said, the anointing is upon me. The Holy Spirit yes, is yes. upon me. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me and is anointing me. And I am proclaiming what the season is. He's, he's taking ownership of the season. Oh, he said, oh, this oh. is the season uh, of the favorable year oh, on the yeah. Lord. Amen. And, and Mary said, this is the season of miracles. And uh, you, Jesus oh, yeah. was looking up there at heaven and he didn't see it in the writing. He didn't see it on the calendar. He said, my hour has not come, but Mary didn't stop there. She said, whatever he says, do it. And so what she's doing, she's applying her faith that there's going to be miracles. We're, we're shifting from a season of no miracles to a season of miracles. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. you can do the same. If Jesus can do it and if Mary can do it, uh, and if the sons of Issachar can do it, and the leaders of the tribe of Issachar can do it, and they understand the, the seasons, you can stand up and proclaim this is the season that I'm in and I'm fighting by faith for this promise that Jesus has already purchased for me Amen. on the cross. Amen. I'm going to receive it by faith Amen. or it may be you're going to just receive it uh, as a little child because you know who you are in Christ and you've heard by the spirit of God that this is the season just to receive and walk in abundance and walk in prosperity. Walk this is healing. the season. This is the season for healing. This is the season for prosperity. This is the season uh, for revival. The, what, what season is it? Well, you might say, well, I'm just going to, to, to listen to the, the, to the chroniclers and, and see what they say. So listen to the prophets or, or you can listen to the Holy Spirit Amen. and you can proclaim the season and you can take ownership of the season like Jesus did because it's if you believe you can do what Jesus did and he proclaimed a new season. This is the season of the favorable uh, time of the Lord, the favorable year of the Lord. You can proclaim what your season is in your family and in your life, or you can just sit down and do the routine day after day and have no clue what the season is and have no clue how to have a breakthrough in your life or have no clue what to do. It's all up to you. Are you going to grow up spiritually and begin to follow the Holy Spirit and, and discern the season that we're in and not only discern the season that we're in, but declare what season uh, is entering. What It's one thing to know what the season is. It's another thing to, to proclaim what the season is and take ownership of the season yourself. Hallelujah. 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 Right. Hallelujah. And I want to just uh, uh, talk a few moments about the spiritual senses and, and how we can develop our spiritual senses, such as hearing the voice of the Lord, uh, seeing what what the Spirit of God is doing in, in our lives and, and in our family and, and in our finances and in our jobs and, and uh, you know, what is seeing as God sees, you know, that's a sense. Uh, seeing is a sense. Hearing is a sense. Uh, speaking, you know, our, our mouth is, is a gateway. 
and so what are we supposed to be saying? What scriptures uh, do we uh, we say out of our mouth and confess out of our mouth so that we can uh, change that season? For instance, if you've been in a season of of um, of, of emptiness and and dormancy, uh, you can change that season. You can stand and speak out what the, the scriptures that God gives you by his spirit, and you can change that season. Those water pots, Jesus said, fill them up with water, and then they turned into wine. And so you can, you can do the same thing in your life. You, you know, if, there, if you've been in a season of dormancy, and you want to be in a season of, of life and, and abundance, and well, then begin to uh, speak those scriptures out of your mouth and let your senses uh, be exercised. And, uh, you know, that's, that's maturity. Uh, when we no longer just sit there doing uh, routine, mundane things, but that we're actually changing things and moving things into, into being. And uh, I think that's what, um, uh, you know, Brother Fred has been talking about tonight. That's, that's, part of that anointing the anointing is on the word of god and the more word you have in your life the more anointing you have and so that anointed for the season means that you have heard from the lord and he has poured into you his word uh, by his spirit and then you can begin to move and and enter into that season. Um, I know that when we moved from, uh, we've moved from several seasons, haven't we? Yeah. From um, and and there's always a right before you go into a new season, there is a a stirring on the inside of you that you know that there is something that's that's fixing to happen, that's going to that's about to happen, 